Doctors are warning about the dangers of screen time for young children. Experts say there's concern for infant brain development and the overall impacts on kids who spend too much time with devices. Dr. Jane Tavia Asher is a pediatric neurologist at Cedar Side Eye, and she's here to talk about the research and the impact on learning skills. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is something we have conversations mm -hmm. about all the time, screen time and kids. And of course, for parents, some of them are like, I just need a break. So I give them <laughs> some screen time. But there are so many risks associated with it. So talk about those. Yes, well, the risks, especially for the younger age, is that their brain is still developing mm -hmm. and we want their social skills and their language cortex to develop appropriately. So the problem with screen time is that it really is developing the visual cortex at uh. the expense of the auditory cortex. Uh. So are kids just not speaking and getting as verbal as quickly if they've got the screen in front of them? There are, there are studies that show that excessive screen time or screen time in very young infants is associated with language delay. Interesting. And you want kids to be able to tell you yeah, what's going on. Yeah, that's concerning. You don't want to yes. do that. Right. Yes. So we want to look at some of the recommendations for each age group and how much screen time is considered healthy. I think we have a graphic. Um, and as we're looking at that on the screen right now, so zero to three, no screen time. Um, over three in elementary kids, reading books over tablets is encouraged. Teens less than two hours per day on the screen. How can you encourage parents, though, to have these healthier tech habits? Because you look at that, that seems somewhat unrealistic I in mean, a lot of households. I mean, zero to three. I see yeah. two-year-olds with iPads <laughs> and phones all the time. And again, it's so hard because parents nowadays typically both work and don't have a ton of time. Yes. Well, we know that parents have had these issues with time and trying to keep their right. children occupied yeah. for, forever. Right. Um, and the screens have only existed for, what, about a decade that right. we've been able to handle hand it to them. So we know that there are other ways to entertain our children. And you would be amazed if you train your young children to play with toys independently that is a skill that they will be able to carry with them and you mm. will appreciate the the time you invest in teaching them how to do that I know sometimes it seems like this is just the easier way of just handing over the right. iPad or doing something but as you're talking about then they're not developing some of those creative type of instincts either of, of, of managing when they're bored that's right we know that it hinders creativity. We mm -hmm. know that if they play with toys, and it could be very simple toys, that's really ideal for the younger children. Even a box sometimes. Even a box. <laughs> I used just to love they a good can, box. <laughs> yes. <laughs> things they can stack together, bang on, anything that they can look at three-dimensionally yeah. where they're really studying how things fit together, that's going to develop their creativity and the fine, their fine motor skills. Mm -hmm. So the screen time does not develop their fine motor skills, and mm. it doesn't help them with creativity because it's passive. So what do you have to yeah. say to parents, though? Because I, my, my brother and my mother were having this discussion because my brother's trying to keep the screen away from the three-year-old now. And he's like, but how did you make dinner and get all this done and do this without... Ha and she mm -hmm. said, well, I did used to sit you in front of the TV. Is sitting in front of the TV any different mm. than having yes. the screen in front the of you? The TV is better than, than something it like is. an iPad. It is. It is. For a couple of reasons. One, we know that the effects on the eyes are, <laughs> are impacting a lot of our kids. And having that screen so close to your face... That's not good. Um, two is that the iPad, it's more rapidly changing images okay. than the TV typically. So the more rapidly the images change, the more it drives dopamine oh. production in the brain. And that ends up down-regulating your dopamine receptors. And so eventually it makes it harder to pay attention That's to That's why this. we have these short attention spans the more we look at screens. Okay, yes. so for the older kids who are allowed more screen time, according to that chart we just looked at, there's a difference though between them passively scrolling and watching videos and actually interacting with people, whether that's chatting with someone or doing like an educational game. Right. I would say FaceTiming with family or something like that, that would be even acceptable for the younger okay. ages because there's a back and forth communication still with a family member. For the older kids, it's the scrolling especially is what's been shown to be linked to mental health issues. Interesting. So depression and anxiety in those older kids. Um, but in terms of education. So it's not necessarily yes. the content. That's so surprising to me. It's the actual just scrolling and the dopamine hits. That's right. Huh. The scrolling and the dopamine hits. And the other thing is that's really important to remember is that we know that the things that are protective for a teenager's mental health are face-to-face -face social interactions okay. and sports, physical activity. Oh, right. So you're doing one at the expense of the yeah, other. Yeah, because the more you're scrolling, the less you're doing yes. all of those real things. That's right. This is great information. Very helpful, doctor. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me.